Hey there, I am Stephanie, an artist living in Vannes, France. In today's video, I will be sharing the process of my latest painting about coastal development that I did for Pangea Seed. I am currently doing a series of painting highlighting threats to marine life, and one of the paintings will be turned into a limited edition print by Pangea Seed that will benefit marine conservation. Pangea Seed work with artists all over the world to create these prints, and I was really happy when they contacted me about a collaboration, as I've been wanting to work with them for years. I already did two paintings for them, Warming Seas and Acidification. I actually did a video on my YouTube channel about Warming Seas, and I will link that one in the description below. I'll also add a link to acidification to my Instagram page. I apparently did not do a YouTube video about that one, so yeah, it's on Instagram. Working on very specific themes like that has been really good for my 2D progress. And by the way, they never asked me to do four different paintings. I actually offered them because I knew I might struggle a bit. As you know, I'm much more of a sculptor than a painter, and even though I do a reasonable amount of drawing and painting, it's not something that I'm as comfortable with than sculpting. So I thought, okay, let's just do four, originally three, but whatever. Let's do four different ones so I can try different things and find myself visually without having the pressure of making it right the first time. It really helped me to be more daring in my technical approach, but also visual approach. Taking risks I would probably not have taken if I had to do just one painting. And I also could not decide on which issue to work, as they are also crucial. They basically tell you to work on one of these six different threats. Overfishing, plastic pollution, coastal development, ocean acidification, biodiversity loss and warming seas. When I saw those, I asked them which themes artists work less on, and apparently most choose to work on biodiversity loss, so I decided to tackle the rest. For each of these themes, I have been making quick composition sketches up front, so I know where I was going. When working with ink and watercolor, I really like working with the white space of the page, so that's what I try to play around with every time to give the page and the space a lot of presence. For coastal development specifically, I really wanted a sort of continuity between the buildings, the growth and water, but also a bit of opposition between the two. I also decided to go for an architectural cut, cutting through the earth, so I could easily show the landscape of the seaside and the buildings, so I knew it was going to be understandable right away. I thought it was also a nice wink at architecture in general, since coastal development is a serious threat to marine life, but also excessive erosion. According to Pangea Seed, and this is, I was pretty surprised and shocked at that, but coastal areas are home to over 90% of all marine species, so that's a lot. But of course we are losing these habitats at an alarming rate with coastal development. As usual, I started by roughly sketching it out with pencil, then drew with dip pen and waterproof ink, and finally painted with watercolors, and at the end, a few touches of gouache. For this painting, and for probably no apparent reasons, I felt like going green. I really wanted shades of green and mint. Originally, I was thinking more mint, green and orange. Uh, but I ended up working on really green and blues and mint more than any orange. In retrospect, I'm not sure if I didn't rush my decision a bit, to be perfectly honest. While I do like the final result, I did struggle a bit through the process, but then, then again I often struggle during the process until I get it right. 
but I still feel that the colors are maybe a bit sad, but then maybe that's okay. I mean, considering the theme, sadness is fine in that specific topic, so I'm not sure. It's very lush green, which reminds me a lot of moss, which I like, but again, would I do it exactly like this? Probably not. I would probably go with more vibrant colors, more warmer colors. I actually ended up adding touches of a nice warm yellow and some purple, just to keep it a bit more vibrant and interesting. And all of this thanks to gouache, so thank you gouache for helping me out. Honestly, speaking of gouache, I'm, I've never been very adamant on using just one technique or doing it right, so to speak. So you know, with watercolor you're not supposed to use white and you're supposed to use the white of the paper and all that stuff. I don't think that's still true nowadays, since most artists used a lot of mixed media in the artworks. So yeah, I decided to go with gouache. Um, I tend to use watercolor the most, but sometimes I make decision mistakes in colors, and so gouache comes in really helpful. So I'm really happy to have added gouache to my inventory, because it's really convenient to undo a color mistake with gouache. And yeah, it changed a lot of things also the way I work. So yes, that's pretty much all I have to say in this video. I really do hope you enjoyed watching this time lapse and learning a little bit more about this painting. I do try to do a lot of videos about my art process. I feel like that's what I can share most freely and also what seems the most helpful. Um, for me or for others to explain how I work, where I get stuck, where I struggle and um, where, where it's easy for me and maybe it will help you in your own process. I, th I feel like art process is often a bit messy and it's not something that is as straight to the point um, than you might think, so it's not like you have an idea, you sketch it out very precisely and then you just follow a very specific plan. I feel like it's a lot of toppling and wriggling through struggles, finding the right colors, readjusting, making mistakes, readjusting. So there's a lot of going back and forth and I really try to show you that in my videos. It's not always very straightforward. But I try to make these videos as honest as I possibly can, so hopefully you feel like you're not alone in this creative mess. So if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, share and maybe subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.